Hi guys, the last search is by Crypto. Back again with another Wolf video. Today is going to be a Dragon Ball Wolf search. And we're going to be covering what if the Dragon Balls couldn't bring people back to life? This is going to be another Dark Wolf. I know a lot of these what ifs have been dark, guys, so far, but uh, that's kind of the way I'm going at the minute. So, let's get started. And as always, feel free to comment, like, subscribe. And be sure to click the notification bell to get all videos. Let's get started. So, we're beginning things in Dragon Ball. And not much happens up to the point of the time where Krillin is killed by Tambourine. And Goku has his battle with King Piccolo. Twice. And Piccolo Jr. is born. And Roshi, Chiaotzu and Krillin are all dead now. As well as the rest of the people who were killed by Piccolo's children. Goku then goes up to the lookout to meet with Connie. And asks is there any way to bring them back to life. Well Connie considers recreating Shenlong. And uh, trying to use the Dragon Balls to bring them back. But he's not sure if it will work or not. He couldn't remember if he had allowed that to be part of the wishes. So... He recreates Shenron, and Goku gathers the Dragon Balls. Pro Shenron is then shunned, and Goku asks for all those killed by King Piccolo and his children to be brought back to life. However, Shenron simply says, That wish cannot be granted. It is a wish beyond my power to bring people back from the dead. Goku is shocked by this, and he's sad that he will never be able to bring back his best friend Krillin, or his master Roshi, or even Chiaotzu. Do you have any other wishes? Asks Shenron, and Goku asks for all the damage caused by King Piccolo and his children upon the earth to be restored instead. That is a simple wish. It shall be granted. Your wish has been granted. Farewell for now. Shenron goes back into the Dragon Balls. And they then split off into the Earth once again. But Goku is still saddened by this news. So, they can't be brought back, Kami. No, I'm afraid not, Goku. We have to carry on with our lives. I guess so. But I can offer you something else, Goku. I can offer you training in order to deal with Piccolo's reincarnation. So, Goku then goes on to do his three years of training on the lookout with Connie, just like in the original. Only this time, he is more fired up with the training, as he knows that he has to do better in order to protect people from the, from the world, as there is no way in this timeline to bring them back to life. The three years pass, and Goku in this timeline has actually managed to stay a little bit longer in the time chamber. It's not a whole year still, but he's able to last about about five or six months. So it's a lot better than what he did in the original. He then goes to the tournament, and all the events play out just like in the original. Goku is then made the world champion, and he then gives Piccolo a sense of being just like in the original. We then have the five year time skip and everything is the same, other than that, and that in this timeline, instead of slacking off, Goku is actually training a lot more harder, as he knows that if Piccolo or any other being evil comes to the earth and tries to kill people, there'd be no way of bringing them back to life. So he has to be strong. The five years then pass, and the Z fighters don't have a reunion, but there's no Nastaroshi here, so they don't have it on his island. In this timeline, they have it at Capsule Corp, where Bona lives instead. And then, the brother of Goku then arrives on Earth. He scans the power levels of the beings. Ugh, the beings on this planet are so weak. How did Kakarot struggle to deal with them? He's thinking. He scans them, bleeps. Most of the power levels are only around four or five at best. But there's one cunning towards him 
nearby in a wasteland which can sense 360. That's not bad. That's Piccolo, by the way. He's gotten a little bit stronger from training, but he's not gotten that much stronger. He goes then to find Piccolo. He doesn't know this is Piccolo, by the way. He thinks it's Goku, just like in the original. Oh, sorry, you're not the person I was looking for. Yeah, well then beat it before I nick you, says Piccolo. <laughs> Don't be ridiculous, green man. Piccolo's then trembling. He is scared of this being, but why? His power! It was so immense. Right, so then leaps into the sky. He knows so another reading on his scouter. And it's... It's immense. It's almost as high as his. Power level of 1,000. Wow. That's the strongest on this planet. It must be Kakarot. He then flies in the direction of Capsule Corp. He then lands in front of the Z Fighters. Ah. I'd recognise you anywhere, Kakarot. You look exactly like our father. Goku is unconfused. Who are you? Seriously, Kakarot? You don't remember your own brother? Says Raditz. Thinking that Goku would realise who this is. He just blanks Raditz. I don't have a brother. What are you talking about? Why you failed your mission, Kakarot? You were supposed to kill everyone on the planet. You can't help admiring Goku's strength, though. It's really high, and just like in the original, he tries to ally him and request him to join the Freezer army. But Goku refuses. And in this timeline, he's evenly matched with Raz to a degree in their battle. But... Raz's 1200 power level is still too much for Goku, and Gohan is still kidnapped. Goku is then forced to, just like in the original, to create an alliance with Piccolo, and they go to fight Raz. They then take off their weighted clothing. Piccolo's power level raises to about 500 in this timeline, whereas Goku's is now even with Raditz, 1200, and they have a duel to the death. But... Unfortunately, just like in the original, Goku is forced to sacrifice his life in order to get rid of Raditz. <coughs> I will be avenged, Nanekian. One year, my two comrades will come and kill you all. <laughs> Goku and Raditz then both die. Piccolo is confused by what Raz called him, but he knows this. The two Saiyans, he has to prepare the boy and prepare himself for that day. Goku then goes on to, to travel across Snake Way, just like in the original, and trains with King Kai for the whole year. However, in this timeline, there's no way of bringing him back to life. So, Fortune Teller Barber is forced to aid in this situation against the Saiyajins. Goku is then granted a 24-hour reprieve on his life in order to return to the mortal realm. Of the day of the Z, Z Fighters going to battle Vegeta and Nappa, Boba teleports Goku to Earth and he goes to fight alongside the Z Fighters. In this timeline, none of them are killed as Goku is able to be there right on time. He then has his fight with Nappa just like in the original and... In this timeline, Mappa is still killed by Vegeta. Vegeta and Goku then have their fight. And it seems like Goku is still not enough for Vegeta. But he uses the Kaya Cannon. And in this timeline, because he's dead, he doesn't have to worry about exhausting his body. So he simply goes Kaya Cannon times 5. And it's enough to give Vegeta a run for his money. He then fires the Kanehanea against Vegeta's Gallic Gun, but with the Times 5 Kaio Cannon, it's giving Vegeta a real run. He's actually having to put an effort for once. I can't believe this! Chakarot, I will not let you win! 
Goku is forced back slightly, but then he has an idea. One last push, and I make his body absolutely shattered, but it won't hurt him as he's already dead. He then goes and screams, Kaioken times ten! And Vegeta is then immediately obliterated by the Kanehanea. He is dead and out of count. Goku then powers down to the ground. He had used a fair amount of his time as well, left on Earth. It had now been cut down to about 10 hours. He had then stayed with the Z Fighters and they enjoyed his company for that time. But they then wondered, was there any other way of bringing Goku back to life? Piccolo thought about this. Both he and Connie knew there was something else about their species. And Vegeta and Rags both did keep calling them the Nekians. Was it possible that they were not from Earth? That they were from a different race? Were, were they more like them who could create Dragon Balls, maybe? They then thought about this and went to Manic in a spaceship created by Bolna and her father. It took them a whole month to get there. However, in this timeline, Frieza is still on Manic looking for the Dragon Balls. But, before he's able to gather any of them, the Z Fighters are able to gather them more easily as they are not under the whereabouts of Zarbon or Dodoria because there is no Vegeta to meddle in their affairs in this timeline, seeing as he is dead. They then arrive at Con Guru's Tower where they are met by Nail who enters in, then into Guru's tower. He then awakens all of their potential, making them extremely more powerful, and giving them the final Dragon Ball that they need. Nail is then ordered by Lord Guru to speak for their wishes. Purunga is then summoned up in the sky. The sky turns dark, and out comes Purunga. You who have governed the seven Dragon Balls. State your wish and I shall grant it. I shall grant any three wishes within my power. Nail then asks the Z Fighters what is their first wish. They simply ask for Goku to be brought back to life. Nail asks this, but sadly, just like Shenron, Purunga says, That is a wish beyond my power. For you see, guys, this is a lore that has been throughout all the sets of the Dragon Balls, including Super Dragon Balls as well. None of these sets could be used to bring anybody back to life after all. So that includes Purunga. So sadly that means that in this timeline, Goku shall stay dead. Permanently. They then ask if there's any way that they can bring people back. Nail sadly says no that this is the case, and ask if they have any other wishes. They then ask, is there any way to get rid of Frieza? Purunga is then asked by Nail about this, and he simply says, The one known as Frieza is too strong for me to kill, but I can seal him away. Nail then tells this to the Z Fighters, and they simply ask if this can be done. Nail then says to this wish to Purunga, and Purunga grants the wish. Freezer then feels himself getting teleported somewhere. What, what, what is, what's going on? He doesn't understand what's happening to him. But then he realises he's, he's in a jar. He can't move for some strange reason, and he's, he's in a different realm. No. No, I can't believe this. I've been sealed away! When I find out who did this to me, I shall torture them into oblivion before I slaughter them to death. They will pay tenfold, no, a thousandfold for the torturous and mischievous trick they have done on the mighty Lord Frieza. The Frieza can't escape, and this is where he shall stay for the rest of his days. The Z Fighters are then asked, what their second wish is. They then ask, is there any way to get rid of all the soldiers that Frieza has? Purunga is then asked this by Nail, and he says that he can seal the rest of them in this realm with Frieza. 
alongside anybody who works or listens to Frieza's orders. Nail then grants this wish to Shem to Purunga for the Z Fighters. And all of the other warriors, the Ginyu Force, King Cold, all of the soldiers, and the Zab on the Doria and Kui are all trapped within this realm. Son, how did we get stuck here? I, I don't know, father, but it seems like we're going to be here for the rest of our days. Oh, King Cold is outraged. Purunga then asks what is their final wish, and the Z Fighters simply ask that all the damage caused to Nanak to be restored, and this is done. They then travel back to Earth in the spaceship, resorting with their losses. True, they had gotten rid of the worst villains in the entire universe, but on the other hand, they still couldn't bring back Goku. They had to deal with this problem. When they had arrived, Goku had then been told that his time was up, and he had to now return to the other world. He gives a giving embrace to both Chi Chi and Gohan, and is then escorted back to the other world with, with Fortune Teller Bother. He then begins his training for the rest of time in the other world. And that, guys, is where we're going to be leading things for part one. We will continue back again with this when we get more views on this video. And we will see what happens in part two. Whether or not there will be any way to bring people back to life. Or what could possibly happen. So, what did you think of this so far? Would you like a part two? And if so... What do you think could happen down the line? Would any of the events of the rest of the series be worse or better off without Goku and Vegeta? You'll just have to find out next time in this inciting series of what if the Dragon Balls couldn't bring people back to life? Hope you enjoyed and be sure to like, comment and subscribe as always. Take care now, boys. Bye.